Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly hanged it with the action With the vato speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut Go BBS is on a beamer When Fat Cat was tearing queens up Fall off the profit not the re -ups. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm Baby Man Just caught a touchdown from the bay In the early 2000s, two separate gangs would be formed in Atlanta that would shape the city's history. Investigators are now looking into whether they could be linked to other crimes and their alleged connection to the 30 Deep street gang. From snatching grabs, robberies, burglaries, assaults, and even murders. Police say four men opened fire on February 5th with a high-powered weapon in broad daylight. The witness lost a leg in the shooting. That witness was set to testify against Jonathan Redding. And media outlets and court transcripts suggest that the APD believed that both gangs could be traced back to a single individual in a notorious crime family. Sure. 30 Deep is heavily involved in narcotics distribution and sales in the Kingsville community, but what they're most known for, I mentioned already, which was smash and grab burglaries. They essentially pioneered the art of stealing a car, um, driving it through the front of a store, and then sending, you know, uh, five, six, seven, eight people inside to run in and grab as much stuff as they could, um, run back out, and then sell those things on the street. And when I came to the gang unit in 2009, the Atlanta Police Department greatly expanded the gang unit to respond to that exact trend. And we were tasked with um, attempting to to interdict those crimes and stop this rash of smash and grab burglaries. But members didn't just do property crimes, they were also involved in quite a number of shootings, um, several murders, um, a, lot, you know, a lot of aggravated assaults, um, a lot of stolen cars, um, high volume theft from autos, um, sometimes breaking into 20, 30, 40 cars at a time. Um, so everything from property crime to violent crime. In 2009, while property crime across the nation would see a slight decline, Atlanta would experience a notable increase. According to the FBI Uniform Crime Report, property crimes nationwide had decreased by 1.6%, but in Atlanta, they had risen by 7.6%. That uptick would be attributed to a series of snatching grabs and other significant thefts that would affect the city, particularly one at Lenox Square Mall. According to APD, this surge in criminal activity will begin to peak in 2007 with a group of thieves targeting high-end stores. Over time, they struck around 70 locations, leading to an estimated $1.5 million in stolen merchandise. Their method involved breaking windows and stealing high-value items. One particular incident would stand out. At around 3.30 a.m. on a quiet night, nine masked individuals would break into the Macy's at Lenox Square Mall by smashing the window and making off with around 80 pair of designer jeans worth about $10,000. Normally targeting retail shops like Foot Locker, this event would mark the first time that such a high-end store like Macy's at Lenox Square Mall had been targeted. The latest crimes happened overnight at two Foot Locker stores and police say two members of the notorious gang 30 Deep were involved. Fox 5's George Franco is live on the scene now with details. George? A man to this Foot Locker store on Metropolitan Parkway is boarded up tight after some smash and grab burglars got in early this morning. We're told the store is going to reopen tomorrow, but not after heavy security was put in place tonight. Work crews spent the day fixing storefronts at two Foot Locker stores that were hit by smash and grab burglars in the early morning hours. One store on Metropolitan Parkway, the other on Campbellton Road, several miles away. It just gives a bad stigma to the area. Javaris Brown owns the barbershop two doors down the Foot Locker on Campbellton Road. He says he and other merchants are concerned Foot Locker and other chain stores could leave after a series of burglaries and robberies. 
you know, they take their business out of our neighborhoods and take it somewhere else, which drops property value. And it's a lot of, it's a chain reaction to things like that. So, Atlanta police say shortly after the two stores were burglarized, they arrested six suspects, four juveniles and two adults. Police say two are confirmed members of the 30 Deep Gang which has been linked to other high-profile crimes in Atlanta. Sean Bunkley, who owns Keller Sports, says he's not sure who burglarized their store last year, but he says the 30 Deep Gang isn't helping. This makes people uneasy, and I'm, we're trying to bring people all over the city to come to shop with us, and they don't want to come over here because they're scared. Atlanta police tell Fox 5 News there is surveillance video, but they say they're not releasing it just yet as their investigation continues to move forward. Meantime, Foot Locker stores were heavily guarded and at least one store had reopened. Store employees weren't allowed to speak to us, but their neighbors hope the rest of the holiday season will be uneventful. When people come and take your stuff, especially around this time of year, wow. Atlanta police have not released the names nor any mugshots of the individuals arrested, but we're told they face charges of burglary, theft by taking, and criminal statute, which can enhance the time spent in prison because of gang activity. Reporting live tonight in Southwest Atlanta, I'm George Franco, Fox 5 News. The gang will be first known as the Blue Jean Bandits, and they gain notoriety for their focus on luxury fashion. But their crimes eventually expanded from stealing clothes, and it would go on to include auto theft, assaults, and even murder. Atlanta police are offering a reward in the search for the people accused of shooting two men, one of them a witness in an upcoming murder trial. Police say four men opened fire on February 5th with a high-powered weapon in broad daylight. The witness lost a leg in the shooting. That witness was set to testify against Jonathan Redding in the murder of Atlanta bartender John Henderson. Henderson was gunned down during a robbery back in 2009 at the Standard Bar. Officer Officers canvassed the 2300 block of Boulevard Grenada yesterday looking for clues. Well, the, the gun that was used uh, was an AK-47, and uh, we did recover that weapon a short distance from this location. According to witnesses, the uh, victim fled this location uh, and went to the south on the low and uh, the start discarded the weapon, which we did recover, which is going to be an AK-47 assault rifle. Police are offering, offering a $2,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. If you know anything, call crime. I'm stoppers. Sabi to Sabi, bro, the fuck your pussy ass ain't like, man, bro. You fake play. Ain't P. Ain't Slaughter Gang. Ain't the mob. Yeah, I know the real mob, man. Y'all, you ain't the mob. I'm sure if you ask anybody that worked with Atlanta PD from about 2007 to 2013 or so. I'm almost sure that they'll tell you that the Reddings are one of the most notorious families in the city's history. Jonathan Redding would be sentenced to life plus 70 years in March of 2011. His conviction would be related to a 2009 murder of a bartender by the name of John Henderson at the Standard Food and Spirits near Grant Park, as well as his involvement in three other robberies. Javaris Redding Jonathan's cousin would be sentenced in August of 2012 to 25 years in prison. His conviction would stem from an armed robbery at a Motel 6 in College Park back in 2011, during which he and an accomplice would held three victims at gunpoint and steal their 2010 Camaro. And probably the most notorious of the family is going to be George Keon Reddick. Javaris's older brother. He would be sentenced to two consecutive life sentences plus 40 years back in February of 2011. His conviction would stem from an alleged 2007 shooting spree that would result in two deaths and two injuries 
Authorities would allege that George was the leader of the notorious 30 Deep Gang, which was formed back in 2004 in a Mechanicsville neighborhood of Southwest Atlanta. They would also allege that he is a founding member of the Atlanta Penitentiary Gang, the Goodfellas, or GF, or the Mob. The authorities believe that the gang began in and around the same time as 30 Deep, sometime in the early 2000s, within the Fulton County Jail at 900 Rice Street. The Goodfellas are said to allegedly operate with a mob-style structure with a focus on generating money through extortion, drugs, and other criminal activities. And court transcripts suggest that many members or former members of 30 Deep are also said to be involved or be members of the Goodfellas. New at six, we have learned a judge has thrown out two murder convictions against an accused gang leader convicted of double murder. The murders happened in 2007. Channel 2 investigative reporter Mark Winnie live at the Fulton County Courthouse in downtown Atlanta. Mark, the man talked to you in an exclusive jailhouse interview and said he knew that he would be cleared one day. You know, roughly a decade and a half ago, the uh, alleged street gang 30 Deep was one of the highest profile uh, alleged gangs in Metro Atlanta. It's in the background of this story, but so is a judge's order vacating conviction for two murders. Where our viewers can look at your face and hear your voice, did you kill Ronnie Pierce? No, sir. I did not kill Ronnie Pierce. How about Victor Hill, not the former sheriff, but another Victor Hill? I have not never killed nobody. Never. We interviewed George Redding in the Fulton County Jail, where we're told he's awaiting trial for two 2007 murders for the second time. Fulton County Deputy District Attorney Vince Fawcett. Will the Fulton County DA's office retry George Redding for the two murders? Yes, we will. And that trial will happen July 8th of this year. His attorney, Manny Aurora, says Redding's back in Fulton County custody and not in state prison because of an order filed in Butts County in December in which Judge Robert L. Mack Jr. granted Redding's petition for habeas corpus, ruling Redding was entitled to a new trial and his convictions from a 2011 trial for the 2007 murders are vacated. As you sat in your cell, Minute after minute, hour after hour, year after year, did you ever believe you'd hear the news you got from the habeas judge? Yeah, I like, I knew like I was innocent, like in my heart, God had already declared it, but he just like, I just had to will stand. Getting a grant of a habeas corpus is one of the hardest things in the legal profession to do. It takes a lot of courage for a judge. Aurora says his firm took on the case in 2021, long after Redding was sentenced to life and after unsuccessful appeals. He says Judge Mack basically found problems with a public defender's handling of the case. Aurora says another man has claimed responsibility for one of the murders for which Redding was convicted, and a witness at the original trial recanted. He had a public defender who came on the case just days before trial. Days before, a Friday. He came on the case on a Friday and told him I was going to trial on Monday. A WSBTV.com story about the first trial with a February 2011 dateline said George Redding, then 21, was widely recognized as a leader of the Mechanicsville-based gang 30 Deep. Was he the leader of 30 Deep? He is steadfastly denied that. Mr. Redding has steadfastly denied any gang involvement for the last 18 years. George Redding will not face formal gang charges at his retrial, correct? Not, not formal gang charges uh, from the counts themselves, um, but we do anticipate gang-related evidence to come in uh, to this trial in the form of motive evidence. Aurora says he told his client before the interview not to discuss facts of the case and other aspects because of pending court action. Even when it looked real dark, like I can't see no light, you know what I'm saying, I just continued to pray. I lost a lot over the years. 
Now, I'm not sure if Atlanta still qualifies as one of those down home southern cities where everybody knows everybody by first and last name with the city probably filled with more outsiders than natives from Atlanta at this point. But one thing I'm sure of is that if APD or probably if any other police department in Georgia come across you or pull you over and see that your last name is Redding, I'm sure that they're probably going to dig a little bit deeper. And the family member that police probably would consider the most notorious of the entire family and someone said to be responsible for the formation of two of the city's most influential gangs probably ever but definitely in the last 20 years with 30 deep and good fellas or the mob is up for a new trial while he is said to have led the 30 deep crew he is mentioned as one of the founding fathers of the secretive group the good fellas and like i said earlier the good fellas are said to be a group that was formed in the Fulton County Jail after it was said that several inmates would have a sit down in an order to try to gain organization. Even though the group is believed to have members on the streets, they're believed to be more powerful in the Georgia and Florida prison systems. So much so that dating way back to 2014, the Georgia prison system would implement a special security threat group to specifically target GF or good fellow members behind bars. One Georgia prison inmate would write about the group that they have their own way of living and they're just like any other brotherhood, but they come from the Atlanta area, but prison officials hate them and label them as security threats to the prison. Speaking on other factions in prison, I'm sure like the Muslims or probably even Bloods or Crips, he would state that every other group can come to a tier two program and go back to the main compound after doing nine months in a cell. But specifically speaking about good fellow members, he would explain them in a situation where they weren't able to get out of that tier two program, saying even after they completed it, they would again be forced to repeat the program again. He would speak on other prisons and other prisoners that were arbitrarily labeled as good fellow members, saying that the police began to use that tier two program for long term punishment and isolation. And with being in custody since he was convicted back in February of 2011, sent upstate and then back to the county for his new trial. I'm sure George Keon Redding went through every step of that tier two program and probably the other tiers associated with it and with the notoriety associated with him, his family, and even more important, his last name. It makes me wonder about the chances that he would get to have a fair trial anywhere in the city of Atlanta. Now, I know we heavy in the town. If we got anybody that was down on Rice Street or anywhere in the Georgia prison system that went through that tier two experience, Y'all get down in the comment box. Now, if you know, you know, they say them boys had the whole city in trues. If you was one of them niggas that was around at that time and getting a discount on them high ass jeans, y'all definitely get in the comment box. And my people from the A, y'all let these people know that just like in New York, where it's probably the bloods running the prison system or in Ohio, they have the heartless felons down in Georgia. It's going to be the mob. Now, y'all make sure y'all hit the red bell and subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trail spill shit is dropping. Y'all make sure y'all get in the comment box below. Y'all let me know what cities we need to go to, what stories we need to tell, what we missed, what we got wrong, all of that. Y'all tapping with me directly on Instagram, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. And until the next play, y'all know how we rocking. Shades pop a lot. Salute the almighty mob.